There are 10 Legoland parks currently in operation, and half of them feature a wild mouse coaster. While the names may vary, the ride experience is nearly identical. Each wild mouse coaster is from Mach, but it doesn't have the usual layout. These are great options for kids, but not for coaster enthusiasts. Let me explain in this review. Mach debuted their steel wild mouse coasters back in the mid 1990s. Their standard or compact model features a series of hairpin turns at the start, followed by some sharp dips in the second half. Roughly 20 of these have been built at parks and carnivals across the world. It is also worth knowing that Mauer Sony offers a nearly identical layout as well. In 1999, Mach debuted a larger Wild Mouse. This one would be 5 stories tall like the original layout, but it would feature an equally as tall drop to start off the ride. The first two installations like this were Fly at Canada's Wonderland and Matterhorn Blitz at Europa Park. Mach has produced 9 of these models, and 5 of them have gone at Legoland parks. Technic Coaster went to Legoland California in 2001. Both Project X at Legoland Dutchland and Extreme Racers at Legoland Billund opened in 2002. Legoland Windsor received Jungle Coaster in 2004, but it was removed in 2009 due to noise issues and relocated to Legoland Florida in 2011 where it originally was named Project X. Then 2012, Legoland Malaysia also received one named Project X. All three versions named Project X were later renamed the Great Lego Race. This brought virtual reality headsets to the coaster. This upgrade occurred in Malaysia in 2017 and 2018 on the other two. I believe some of these parks may have discontinued the VR option. As with many VR coasters, it increased load time significantly. I have only ridden the Lego Wild Mice in their original forms, so this review will not cover the VR component. All iterations of the ride have vehicles inspired by the LEGO Technic series. This was a toy line that featured specialized pieces, including motors to create more complex models. The exterior body of each car looks like a LEGO version of a test vehicle. Then the walls around the attraction have a similar aesthetic to them, but there really isn't any theming during the coaster itself. The versions at Legoland Billund and Windsor have a more mundane paint scheme to tie in with the jungle vibe of Adventureland, but the vehicles have an identical design otherwise. That leads me into the issues with Windsor's version. Due to noise complaints from neighbors, the park had to enclose the vehicles in 2008. You had these plexiglass coverings that would fold over the riders before leaving the station. It looked hideous. It removed the wind in your face sensation we love on roller coasters, and it killed the ride's capacity. Not only did it take longer to open and close the covering, but the increased weight led to a max of two adults or large kids per vehicle. This is why the coaster closed in 2009 and was relocated to Florida where it could run with the standard open air cars. For the parks where the coaster still operates, it tends to get one of the longer waits in the park. Don't be surprised if it hits 30 to 45 minutes on a busy day. As with many wild mice coasters, it doesn't have the highest capacity. Each vehicle is comprised of just one car. Each car has two rows of two. There are several cars in the course at once at least, and the operators send them out reasonably fast. But there's only so much you can do with cars this short. Each park does have some form of skip the line passes if needed on a busy day. But you can usually avoid a long wait if you head here early or late in the day. I don't really think the seat matters much from a force perspective. But I would recommend having kids ride up front if they want that unobstructed view. Riders are restrained by individual lap bars. Some of these wild mice coasters have shared lap bars between two riders. This doesn't work well when you have a large guest next to a smaller one. The latter isn't secured very tightly. And you'd have that scenario quite often at a Legoland park where the parent and child. This also allows the height limit to be a very reasonable 42 inches. While touching on the restraints, I need to mention Coast Rider at Knott's Berry Farm especially because there's a good chance guests who have gone to Legoland California have also been to the Cedar Fair Park. I am glad to say those wretched shin guards are not found on any of the Legoland versions or any other mock wild mouse for that matter. These guards are nightmares for any adult if you're going on Coast Rider. They are basically panini presses that are jammed against your legs. They cause pain anytime the coaster changes direction. Coast Rider is downright excruciating for me. But back to the Legoland coasters. Each of these coasters begin with a turn out of the station 
and a quick 52 foot or 16 meter tall lift hill. At the top, you have a hairpin turn giving a nice view of the area, then you head down the best part by far, the 5 story drop. It has some zip to it, similar to a big drop on a log flume, and it's profiled in such a way you get a bit of a floaty sensation. On the bill-in version, the pullout takes you through a tunnel with lights. This is a nice touch and I wish it was included on the others as well. You then rise up a sizable hill and maybe, just maybe, get a pinch of air time. But don't get used to it. You will be firmly in your seat for the rest of the coaster. Now, one of the main reasons I think this coaster is great for kids, especially those just getting into coasters, is the trim brakes. This keeps the ride's overall intensity quite low. Some of these wild mouse coasters can deliver wicked laterals if they run with minimal to no braking. The ones at the Legoland parks have a ton of brakes. The one thing you do need to watch out for is the sudden deceleration. It can throw you forwards uncomfortably if you don't brace yourself. You then navigate a series of hairpin turns high above the ground. You still have the visual you may go over the edge, and a few give a light pinch of laterals, but there's a trim brake around every corner to ensure you move at a gradual pace. Strong lateral forces are the primary thing I look for in a wild mouse, and this one deliberately neuters them. The second half of these rides start with a wide turn. You then have a quick dip down and up. Sadly, no air time. You then hit a brake, round a corner, head down another dip, and pop up into another set of brakes. This slowdown is particularly harsh. You then have a really bad finale. You just have two more hairpin turns taken at a glacial rate before hitting the final brakes. You then return to the station, ending the 1,300 foot or 400 meter long coaster. In terms of smoothness, these coasters are fine. The slowdowns can be pretty jarring, but the rest of the coaster is fairly comfortable. The valleys of the smaller dips may have a bang or two, but it's not a real issue for me. So what would I rate the Legoland Wild Mouse coasters? I would give these rides a 3 out of 10. Compared to the other Wild Mouse coasters out there, these ones are very tame. I love the big drop at the start, that's an improvement for sure. But the rest of the layout is toned way down. Again, I get why this is done, so if you have young kids looking for a less extreme coaster, this may be the perfect ride for you. But if you're a thrill seeker or a seasoned coaster enthusiast, you may be disappointed in this one. Especially if you're used to the more daring wild mouse coasters dishing out extreme laterals. If you want to experience this layout at its fullest potential, try the versions of Canada's Wonderland or King's Dominion. Those ones have much less braking. The laterals are considerably stronger in the first half, but I do think the second half is still a downgrade compared to the usual mice. It just doesn't have the pops of airtime you can get in the standard models. So those are my thoughts on the wild mouse coasters found in the Legoland parks. What are your thoughts on these coasters? Do you like these rides? Or do you have a similar view as me? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.